Hi everyone, Sandy Trefker here. Welcome to my YouTube channel and another tutorial project for Country Craft Creations using the Farmhouse Kitchen Paper Collection by Echo Park. I have a tutorial following this intro of how to make this tiny book. This will hold some small photos and it's a fun little quick project to do out of scraps that you can give as a gift. I've added a tag here on the side. So there's a tutorial for the, the tiny book. And then at the end, I will show you these three recipe um, cards that I made with other scraps for my third project with this paper collection. There's no tutorial on this one, but I do show more details on the end and kind of explain how I made it. So stay tuned. To make a tiny book, we're going to make our cover and pages combined, so they all go together. So from your scraps, I'm using the scraps from the uh, Farmhouse Kitchen, that those scraps that I had that I received from Country Craft Creations, these are by Echo Park. So you want at least six that are four inches by six. And what we're going to do, we're going to score them in half. I've already done mine, but you would score in half at three so that they fold in half. Now, these are not going to be stacked within each other, but on top of each other. So I have two of these. Uh, let's see. I think I have two black plaids. So just arrange them the way you want. I'm going to put this front and back. And you're going to want to fold them. And burnish them. So I kind of alternated the ones in between. So this is the one that's extra. We're going to do it that way. Okay, put this one in the middle. So these are stacked up. Now I'm going to show you what to do if you don't have a big enough scrap. So you know if you have extra paper left over that you can cut, then we would do this this away. But maybe you want a few extra pages and you don't have enough to uh, cut the full four by six. So I'm going to show you a way to use other scraps to get a page with pockets. So stack these up. So these go like this. I'm just going to put a paper clip on them to keep them all together. So we're going to grab one that's cut from scraps that is, um, let's see here, I thought I had a couple of these. Everything's got moved around since I cut them. So you want one that is three, three by four. And then we're going to make these hinge type pockets. Like this. So that we double them up. So I want two. I'm going to do it this way. So you want two of these. So I have the roosters and the floral like this. And I want the roosters to the outside, so I'm going to turn it this way. So this is just going to join these two together to give them that extra thickness. So grab your glue. And I'm going to put glue along each end and along the fold lines. So I'm going to attach one first. And it's going to be this way. I'm going to make sure I'm going in the right direction. So I'm going to attach it like this right along that fold line. Get some glue here on the other side. But so fold it up so it's a little easier to see and make sure it's straight. So that's one side, and then the other side, we're going to put a little bit of glue on each end. And then we're going to do it along the fold line again. And then we attach this other piece, make sure it's going the right direction, on top of that. And make sure they line up and burnish them down. 
Make sure this one lines up right. Okay. Now that when we open it up, we have two pockets. One here and one here. And you could have put a notch here, so I may do that with my little circle punch. We'll put a notch. So this gives us an extra page here that we can put inside. So that's seven right there. Let me just put this right here. Okay, so there's seven. And then if you want something that is offset, not the exact size, you can just cut one like this one is uh, three, three by three and a half. So it's the width, but not the height. And you can just lay it in there like that. So it would be a single, single page. And then I have this one here that's also a single, that is a three by four. And I'm just going to open this up and stick it inside like that. Okay. So there's my pages all together. I'm going to, um, the binding for these will be a hole punch and ribbon. We're not going to use rings, we're going to use ribbon. So let me get my hole punch and I'll get ready to punch those so out. So we're going to punch two holes on each set of pages. Put your fold in at the top of your scoreboard. And I just put a pencil line mark at three. And at one, I'm going to get me a template here. I'm going to use the larger hole punch size. And we're going to see, let me see how far this goes in where you set it. That's too far. So we want to bring this in. Let's set it about a quarter inch. Let's see what that looks like. Tighten it. I want them all in the same space. So that stops it there at a quarter inch. That will work just fine. So let's punch that. And then the other one. The same distance at a quarter inch. So I'm going to erase my and so mark on that. So we're going to do the same on all of them. So there's your first one. Make sure the fold is going where you're making your mark at one inch and at three inch. And going in about a quarter of an inch. Now then if you want to make sure that they're going right Sometimes I like to just use what I've already got as a template. Make sure things lined up. And I'm going to paper clip it together to hold it together and then I'm going to line it up. So that's a good way to make sure that all your holes are in the same place. So I'm going to just keep doing that. And I'll do this off camera, but you line it all, even the single ones, you line them up the same way. Make sure the single ones, of course, don't have a fold, but make sure that all the ones that are folded together, that you're punching on the fold side. Okay, so I'm going to keep doing that, and then we'll be back. The holes, I have two holes punched into each page set on the fold side. And I've cut two pieces of ribbon out of this black and white check that I had in my stash, about 18 inches each. This may be more than I needed, but I want to make sure I'll be able to tie my bow. <clears throat> so I'm going to thread this ribbon, one at the top, one at the bottom, through each page like this. So just keep doing that and get them all pulled through and do both thread both through before you tie anything. So I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera. So you're going to put it, thread it through all at the top and then all this other piece threads through the bottom. So just keep doing that way, including the singles that are uh, punched. Also, they have two punch, hole punches for the binding 
in each of the single pages as well. So just keep doing it like after you have your ribbons in, you have to put them on the top, one on the bottom, kind of pull and even them out, the tails, tie it in a bow. Make sure that you've checked all your little page sets so that everything is into ribbons before all this final tying goes. Pull it tight and line everything up. So I'm just going to first pull it tight, this, and I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot. Here, just like that to secure it. And then one on this side. Same thing, pull it up, tie the knot, and secure it. So there we have that. So our little pages can just flip back and forth on the ribbons, just like that. So there's your double ones. Lots of the pocket right here. Okay. And then we're going to, I'm going to decide, do I want to tie them into a bow or not? Let's see how it looks. I've got some yellow ribbon I want to add in too, I think. Tie this up. That. And then we go ahead and do the other one. Pull it down and make the little loops even. Straightened up, kind of twisty in there. I like that. Okay, now I have some of the yellow seam binding ribbon here. That was a bow that I spritzed with water and scrunched up. I have two pieces. These start out about about 14 inches or so. I just want to kind of wrinkle them up really good. Get them kind of scrunchied. And then I think I'm going to tie them in with this bow. Like this. Kind of kind of secure the the actual bow part by wrapping it around and then pull it in the center right there. And I'll do a double. And this is not going to be tied into bows, so it's, it doesn't matter if they're even so much. So I'm just going to wrap it around and then pull it up and tie it. And just want this yellow color in here with the black and the white. Then I am going to tie knots in the ends of the seam binding ribbon and seam binding ribbon is available at countrycraftcreations.com in a variety of colors so whatever you're looking for you can buy it by the I think by the yard and possibly by the roll so this is some that I got in my design team package with this collection so I'm just trimming off the ends here and then I'm going to wrinkle it back up some more. I like really want it wrinkly. So I'm going to tie this other one as well. So now these ribbons here, I'm going to trim down. A little bit shorter here. There. So now we're ready to finish up. We can add little flips and flaps using scraps and pockets in here. So there's the one that's an offset size. 
Okay, so I'm gonna plan all that and get that ready to go. And I want these scrunched up some more, so I may add a little bit more bit of water to them and let them dry. And then I'm gonna add something to the front here. I have here now some button, red button twine that I'm gonna add. So I'll cut two pieces about 30 inches along each, and I'm gonna fold them in half and then tie it on, and then I will cut the loop in so that it's loose tail. So I'm going to thread this in underneath the binding ribbon. Scissors, I think. Center point and just kind of, hopefully, Put that under there. Right there, poke it under, and grab that loop. I also have some beads here that are rolling around, so I'm going to move them up to the top here. Oops. So pull this out. And then let's bring it all the way. So it's pretty even, half and half. Like then I'm going to cut this loop right here because I want it also to be tails. So I'm down and tie in half. I'm going to tie it into a knot, two good knots. Okay, so there's that red in there. I'll do the other one the same. Grab my scissors and just poke it underneath the one there. Without cutting anything. You want to make sure you're not cutting any ribbons. So just poke it under there. If you've got a needle or something that maybe it makes it a little easier to feed it under there and grab it with your fingernails or the other end of your scissors and bring it up. Let's cut it in half and cut this little loop in half right there and then tie it. Double knot. And so there's that. Now I'm going to go ahead and tie a loop here. Make my loops a little smaller. And these tails I'm going to tie in a knot together. So I have like two singles that are knotted. And trim down and do the other side too. Now the other bow up here, I'm going to add the beads and the charms. So you don't always have to use chain for your charms on your little albums. I actually like to use the button string. more cost effective and easier I think and I like the looks of it so there we go so here in the center well, this is not it I'm going to take a little bit of the glue art glitter glue and I'm just going to secure that knot it will dry clear this one here I'm going to tie it in a bow also. And again, make my loops a little smaller. Now I'm going to go ahead and secure this knot. I'm not doing knots in the ends of the strings yet. We're going to, I'm going to add these beads and some beads and charms. So let's see here. I just want it on one of both. So I'm going to tie a knot 
double knot, two strings knotted. Short. That on the end, let's loosen this up. We didn't quite get it where I wanted it, so. all the way to the end so I can flip it off. Let's try again. Tie a knot with the two strings. Okay, up. Oh, about. Let's see. About an inch from the, the loop, maybe. And I want to put even these up. I'm going to try and feed through a red one. I may have to put glue on the end of these strings. If you have trouble threading these button strings, take some glue and stiffen it up a little bit. Let that dry for a minute. I'm going to go ahead and do my knot on this side. Kind of fiddly here, so I'm sorry if you're having to sit through this, but let's see here. Stick a knot about the right, about the same. Doesn't have to be exact, but pretty close. And then I'm going to take these ends and glue them. And stiffen them up so that they can easier to feed through. Okay. Put that slide up to there. And then I have. Let me see if I can tie this a little bit. Getting kind of short. So it would be easier if you left it longer. Let me tie them up. I'm going to take the ladybug. I believe these are from. Um, Better be scraps. If you're looking for charms, it's a great place to order your charms. Okay, we're going to let those dry before we trim that off. Uh, right now I'm going to go ahead and glue on the front. So I had this left over where I had another project. I'd cut them in half. So you can use a whole little dolly. dolly. These are the mini bow bunnies. I think it's bow bunnies. Uh, no, doodle bug. <laughs> Sorry. The mini paper dollies by doodle bug designs. And I got mine from Country Craft Creations. You can get them in different colors. And I'm just going to put glue on the center part. And I'm just going to lay it in here okay, a little bit and then match this other one up. So we have a little paper dolly here on the front. You can overlap it to make it fit. So cutting it in half might be a good thing to do. Then I fussy cut out on black cardstock this from one of the cutter parts. And I'm just going to like that. I want the red ones at the top. Okay, so I glued the little doilies on and this uh, fussy cut piece of flowers. And I like that. Unless I find something else I'm going to add, I'm going to go ahead and um, trim the little tails here of the charm pieces. So 
up to just leave a little bit there. So, and we have that. So that's the outside. I'm going to look in my frames and tags right quick. So I have an idea. I'm going to see if it's going to work right quick before I forget. So let me dump these out so I can see what I got left over. These are all leftovers. So I think I see some frames that I like. I'm thinking that would be cute. Just add it on there. And so I have a little piece here. Maybe sand it a little bit right there. Okay. I have a little tag of the paper hanging. So I already used the center on another project. And I just think this is just kind of cute to kind of highlight these flowers. So I'll put some glue on the back of the little frame. Now you could make it where you could add a photo. If I change my mind, I can still add one in the center, but I'm just going to go ahead and glue it all the way around and then kind of center it right there with those flowers like that. So I like how that looks. Charms, got all the ribbon here. This one's a little long or didn't crinkle up enough, so I'm just going to tie it up. A little shorter. Make an adjustment here. Bring it up just a little bit shorter. Bring it up there, maybe. And we'll just put that off the end. Maybe this one too, a little bit. I don't like them too terribly long sticking out. So. so now I'm ready to work on the inside. So you're going to take your scraps that you have. And I have a whole bunch here. And I cut them down to three inches wide if I want to use them for pockets. And if you're going to use them for mats or whatever, little flaps. So you open this up to your first page in here. And I'm just going to see what I want, like this one, make a good photo mat. And I'm going to take my punch, scallop or stub. I use my scallop. I'm just going to punch the corners. And glue this in as a photo mat. Whoops. Right here. And keep it nice and straight if you can. There we go. Just kind of burnish that in with your fingers or because I've already added stuff here on the front, so I'm just gonna like that. Then we have this piece here. I think I'm just going to like Fold it. It was um, scrap that's five inches by two and a quarter. Whatever, whatever width you have is fine. And I'm gonna fold it. And that, let's see how that works. So if I glue that there, then that's gonna fold down like that. And so I'm going to stub punch the corners on this also. So this one kind of hangs off a little bit here. I'm going to trim it off a little. The folding may have been not perfect, so scallop. So that makes this short piece here is what I'm going to fold in there. So that's what I'm going to glue down right there. And I'm going to make it into a little pocket. So I'm going to glue on the ends and across the bottom fold and the other side. So I leave that little top open. And I'm just going to stick it down here at the bottom. And we'll use a paper clip there. And then we can 
make a little tag that goes in there. So let's see what we've got that we can scrap to make a tag. This is the same paper. So get rid of that one. A little tag and a little booklet. Ah, here's, here's this one. We'll do that. So I'm going to angle punch. First, I'm going to quarter inch round the bottoms. And I'll angle punch. There. And then I'm going to punch a hole, a small one, right in the center. Yep. And then we'll take some button string and tie. Just one little a little bit here. Just gonna feed in the loop. Make it poke, it, poke it through with my scissors. There we go. Through on the back. Open up that loop. Pull the tails through. Just like that. And I'm just going to tie a knot through both strings. Kind of about an inch. From the top of the tag, maybe, and then just trim these ends off. There's a little tag that's going to stick in there. Still haven't found my paper clip. So I know it's here, but move it by. Oh, there it is. I see it. So I'm going to pull this in and then just clip this right there into that pocket. A little flat pocket doesn't want to let me in there. There we go. Just like that. So that will hold it like that. So we have that little tag. So that's cute. So I'm going to open up to the next page. I'm going to do a belly band. I'm just going to cut this. I don't have. And it's already three inches. Let's make sure I've got it straight. And it's going to go right in there. Matrix just a tad off the end, make it fit better, and do a belly band with the glue on each end. And then we need a tag or something for that. So we've got this journaling tag here. I think that'll look good right there. So it's just made out of one of the cut aparts that I trimmed down, angled, corner rounded, put it on black cardstock, and then I tied the ribbon in through there. That's the same ribbon that I used on the outside. So I'm just going to stick it in like that. It's going to stick out, and that's fine. And then here, let's do a little photo mat. Out of this yellow. Just put it like 
there. I'm going to look at my uh, little frames here. Oh, I like that. See, this is crooked. I'm going to pull that up and realign it. It's better. So this little frame can go right here. So I'm going to put glue on the bottom and two sides. That way you can slide a photo in at the top or you can just cut it to fit right in, in with this part here. Let's just line it up. Okay, so that's cute. Let's turn it to the next page. And I'm going to So I'm going to add this. It's folded up. This is my four inch, about four and a quarter actually, scrap that was two and three quarters tall. I folded it in half. And I'm going to still punch the corners. Scallop, I'm sorry. Scallop punch. And I'm just going to glue the back side of it. Onto this little page here, right under the farmer's market. So that gives us this little clip here that you can add photos in there. And I'm going to scallop punch this. It's the plaid, black and white plaid, and use a photo mat for that. Right there. to the next one. So we have some more black and white here. Let's see what we've got. We've got this bakery. I like this. I'm going to make a tuck spot. So to do that I'm just going to put glue on the top, the bottom, and middle. Back left, which would, would be to your right, but it's turned upside down. So we're just going to glue it over here to the left. So it's a bakery. And then let's fold this in half. This is about a four and a quarter by two and a half. It's just another scrap. And I'm going to fold it in half. You can score it in half if you want. Easy ways to line it up here and then just press down, take your bone folder, get that crease corners. And I'm just going to tuck it in right there like that. It's got a little tuck spot. And then um, this is a book list, so we'll save that. Though that is another goes with that. It's kind of neat. Let's punch these. So this piece was a scrap that was five. Two and a half, fold it in half, and then stub punch it, or a scallop punch. I keep saying stub, but I'm doing a scallop punch. You can do either one. Make sure we've got the right direction of our pattern. And I'm just going to add glue and stick it down right about there. Now I want to make Maybe a pocket. So this is our little single page. It frames. It's just kind of cute. So I'm going to use that frame. I don't know what I would put in it, but you could cut a piece of paper, fit in it that's, you know, plain white and you could travel on it if you wanted to. 
left it open at the top. So it says bakery over here. And I like this one again. I'm going to trim this down just a little bit. I'm a little shorter. So I've made it almost two and a half by three and a quarter. So I'm going to glue that right there. Let's do the scallop punch. So just have fun with it. Just use your scraps if you have some stickers. I'm going to look and see what I've got for stickers because I keep forgetting those if I have any left or not. Put that right there. I don't have too terribly much. I have um, some greenery and a flower and this Life Lemon Sweet. Okay. Find a little bit of mm, card stuff. And small scissors. I'm going to fussy cut around the lemon. Just a little bit there. So that right there. And so I'm just going to glue it on the bottom edge so a photo can be tucked in behind it. That's, this one I kind of got on crooked a little bit. But that's okay. I'm going to take this little flower sticker. And I'm just going to glue it, touch it right there to kind of balance that out. Okay, flip it. So we have the back side of this little short piece. And let's see. I like these little goalies, so I think I'm going to just take one of these, maybe. And we've got to separate them because they're, they're very thin. And I'm thinking I just kind of want it right here in the center. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue. I don't want to cover it solid because I don't want it to show through a lot. And maybe just a few dots along the perimeter. Just a few touch down. And then you could add in you know, a little picture or whatever you wanted to put there. So now we have the barn. I think I like this red. And I'm going to Had a little notch in it, like, let's see here. About right here. See that ribbon? Because I want it to go all the way across. Let's see how that looks. So cut a little notch out. Once I get it plaited. And then that's going to fit right there and glue in. Okay, so glue on the notch side, the other end, and across the bottom. So we make a pocket. Let's put it on that page. Okay. Now I forgot to punch right here. Let me grab my circle punch. So I have my three quarter inch circle punch. And I'm just gonna lift this up. I may have to pull it up if it's already glued down. 
and then re-glue it. And I'm just going to center it. So I should do this before you actually glue anything down. And just get a little notch right there. Then I'll put my glue back on both sides here. Okay, so there's that little pocket. And I'm not using this as a gift tag, so I'm cutting the two and from off. Right there. And then I want to round that corner at the bottom. Using a quarter inch. So that's going to fit in there. So we need to add some ribbon. So I have a small piece of wrinkled up red seam binding ribbon. Again, that you can order from Country Craft Creations, and I'm just going to tie it in a knot here on this tag. And a little bit of red and a double knotted it. Seam binding ribbon, you can, you know, bend it down. I mean, press it down, and it'll go pretty flat. It's not very long. I'm going to see if I can tie a knot in the end. Okay. It's coming right along. It's really cute. Makes a cute, quick little little gift that you can you can whip up probably in a couple of hours, depending on how much decorating you want to do. I'm going to leave this. It says bless the food before us, the family beside us, and the love between us. Then this is homemade with love. It's kind of cute. So I'm thinking I'm going to trim this down and make another little pocket. Trim it down. I'll give it a measurement to, whoops, got it crooked. And that won't do. Okay, so it is the three inches by one and a half. So it's going to fit there. And again, I want a notch right here. For that ribbon. Just cut that, that cut out a little notch there. So let's punch the top. So make sure which is the top. It's the top where the notch is, and so I'm gonna punch out this little notch in my pocket. I glue on both short ends. That includes the one with the notch and then across the bottom, opposite of the this notch, thumb, thumb notch, and then I line it up. And that makes a pocket there. Okay, and then we can these in like a photo mat that goes inside or do I have cut apart like this that I cut out because this I like that's kind of cute and just took that in there with the barns on the back so I'm gonna tuck it in like that and then right here I'm gonna put a bit of this ribbon Jaggedy right there. I'm gonna cut that off. I'm gonna get a measurement here. I'm gonna extend it a little bit and cut it a little bit longer and I'll trim it off after I've attached it down. I'm just going to use art glitter glue. So I'm gonna put a line of art glitter glue about right here in the middle. Lay my ribbon down. even with the inside edge. 
here. Bring it on out. Touch it down, make sure it's kind of straight. And then I'm going to open the page. I'm just going to cut off the excess right here. And then if you want to put just a little bit of glue on the end, keep it from graying. Maybe on the inside too, I'm going to lift it up. And give just a tiny bit, not much. I'll wipe it off. Okay, so that doesn't really show it very good in there. Save that for somewhere else. I think I'm going to go ahead and put the chickens in. I'm just going to trim a little bit. I'm going to scallop, punch all the corners. And then tuck it in so you can do it, use the front or the back. So you'd like the chickens, or you'd rather have the yellow. Go with the yellow flowers, so you can look like that. Okay, next is the little short added in pockets that I did. I've got this little cut apart that says get the zest out of life. That can tuck in there too. That makes it cute. So let's see. No, it's not them yet. It's this one with the barns again. So we got roosters on this side and the barn here. They want to make a little flap. So let's get my scoreboard here. So this is three inches by two and a half. Lift up my mat real quick, put this in, and score at a quarter inch. Don't, you don't want a full half inch because it's too small. This is cut out of a scrap. So I'm going to fold this. Make a little flap, like a little page flap. You could do full size if you have a piece, or you can just do it like I'm doing, just a little, a little bit here. Now I think I like it better with this rooster cut off, maybe. And this one at the top, so it's going to be a little bitty. It ended up being only an inch and three quarters tall. But still, I like it right there. And I'm going to crick it there. And I'm going to scallop punch the corner. It's like a little bit of the rooster, but not a whole lot. So then that's going to go right there, and that's just going to lift up. Put the glue on the quarter inch on the back. Remember, this is a tiny book, so your flaps can be tiny. Just put it on there and burnish it down. So now you have a, just a little flap here. And this is blessed. It's going to cover up that rooster, but you know what? That's okay. To like to add in a lot of different elements. Like if I can out of my scraps, sometimes it gets a little hard. So I'm sending off a little piece of paper there where it stuck out. So this is from the Fuma, I think. I'm just going to glue from halfway. Okay, so you want to make sure it clears that part right there. So then that flaps up like that. And you can burnish it just to make it lay down a little more. Like that. Okay, so there's that. Um, I have these flowers that I like, but I think they may be not a little too thick. Let's, let's see. You've got some really flat ones. I'm going to dress things up. Let's 
I'm going to try to flatten it down. Let's see if we take one that doesn't have a leaf, maybe. Put that one. I'm going to see if I can take this plastic back off and take it apart. So I'm going to put the petals down first. They're real nice and flat now. So I'm going to put that right there. Turn it so that the B is kind of in the petal middle. And then I have this little yellow piece here that has that plastic, and I'm going to cut that off so that it flattens down and then glue it back in the center. So that'll make a nice flat flower. Whoops. You do have to let that dry a little bit. And then if you want one, another one over here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to pull this plastic piece out. Keep the leaf back there. I do this a lot with flowers. I we work on take away some petals to make the sizes work. Whatever, whatever is necessary. And this one, it's got double petals, so put some more glue in the middle here. But this will keep it flat enough to go in the book so that the book closes. So cut this plastic off. I'm going to put the glue in here. It kind of fell apart, but I'm going to piece it back together. Just like that. Okay. I like how that looks. So that kind of leaves a space there for a photo. Um, if you wanted to stick something in here. A little long see here. I'm running out of my scraps. There's this one. I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna trim this down. So I've got this one two and a half wide by two and a half. So it's a square. We're going to punch it too in the scallop. I like this one here. And then it matches the inside of this. I'm looking to make a little tuck spot, so I have this flag left. Um, scrap from the stickers. Let's just have one. I'm going to stick it down. Fussy cut around the scallops. Now, if you don't want to mat it to cardstock and you just want to get rid of the stickiness, you can use embossing powder that removes stickiness or baby powder, cornstarch. We'll remove the stickiness on the back of the sticker. This will also make it a little thicker so it has you know more durabil durability. It won't be flimsy. So I'm just going to glue on the bottom. We're going to stick that right here at the bottom. Put little flowers on it. So that covers up a little bit's peeking out, and that's fine. And then we can take one of these pieces. That one or not. Maybe. And we can tuck that in in the back. Let's punch that. What's this one? Let me get here. Oh, I like this one. Let me trim this down. It's and I got a little tear on it. So I made this one, let's see, 
two and an eighth by three. So that will go in like that with the flowers. So I'm going to punch it in all corners. And then if you wanted to reverse it, we got this nice red plaid. So that looks really good in there like that. And again, I'm going to burnish this down. So it stays down a little better. That's cute. I like that with the flowers. Let me add flowers somewhere else. Now we're here to these pockets that I forgot to notch. So I'm going to see if we can get it in just the tiny, tiniest bit underneath here. Maybe not. I'm going to have to pull it up some. There we go. Doesn't take much. Make sure it's kind of centered. There's that one. This one in here. Okay, we've got two little notches there. And these are little pockets that we can just tuck things like that upside down. <laughs> Thought I had this upside down. We can put get the zest out of life in there. I don't think I have any more of those. I may have some other parts. I don't know if they'll fit in there or not. Let's see. It's too big. It's too big. Memories are made on the farm now. I'm going to have to trim it down. So I'm going to do that. So these are three by four, so I'm trimming it down. Taking off at least about a half inch from the top and the bottom. So that's making it two and seven eighths. A little over three and eighths. So then I'm going to ask, have to take some off the side. So it's just completely reworking this to make it fit. So I'm gonna punch it in the corners. And that leaves it brown on the back, cutting board wood. And then I'm gonna stick that in there like that. Okay, so those look cute like that. Let's put the barn on the back. Let's put the barn up there. Now if we want to add something here, we could. Um, I'm gonna wait on that. I don't see anything that we want to, that I want to put in there unless I put the ribbon, and that's not gonna look right. I might find some lace or something. So let's open up to this one. So we've got this like this. I'm gonna put this little plaid one here. Right there. And when I'm creating, you see how messy I get. Well, you don't get the full view of it, but I get pretty messy here with all my papers and ephemera and things laying around. So there's that. I did like this flowers. I'll do that again. Nice stick up. So we have that. I'm going to let that dry. And then Yes, we can make us a belly band going this way. It's just a little seven eighths inch by three piece. So on the short ends, we put, oh, we've got the farm, we'll only use the farm animals. I think I cut it for that. So put it on each short end. 
And we're just going to attach that in there like that. Cute. I love the little decal, the rooster in there. Yeah. So we do that. And then we're going to I love the bushel and a peck. So I'm going to fussy cut around a little bit here. Let me get this the way the corners are. And so that's just good. Stick it right in there. Cute. So I like that, I like that with the flower. Lots of little pages in this little book. I'm running out of straps. Ah! <laughs> I also have quite a ways to go. So it's getting chunky. They do become chunky with the little tide here on the side, and I like them chunky, so I'm not I'm not opposed to chunky. Um, that would be cute there. Let's see. This is kind of bent. So let's straighten it out. Let's take it apart. Okay, so I'm going to turn the camera off for right now and let this all dry and then figure out what else I want to do and pre plan for the last few pages in my little tiny book. And it's getting kind of chunky. I like that. It's just, it's going to have this little alligator mouth effect. That's fine. Uh, they will stand up like that. So I like it on a shelf like that. I thought I'd show you <clears throat> off camera. I was looking in my stash and I had this resin oval with the white rose, the black background, and I thought, oh, it looks perfect in here, so I glued it in. So it made it a little more gap there, but I don't care, I like that. So we have a little flap here, you can put a couple of pictures in there, but I really, really like that piece right there. So I only had one. So let's flip through here and get to where we were and we need to get, so we hadn't finished. So we did this one with the animal belly band, I really like that. And we need to just flip to the next page. So like I said, I pre-planned on this. So I'm going to put another pocket here. And I did cut out the notch. So this one measures <clears throat> three inches by one and three quarters. Again, I'm just using scraps, so yours may be a little different. Put some glue here on the ends. And then, of course, across the bottom to make this little pocket. Put that notch right where that ribbon is and line this up on my little page. If it's a little too long, you can trim that off. It's gonna work just fine. Make sure it sticks down here on the sides and across the bottom. And then I have this as a fold out. So this was four and a quarter by three and a quarter, folded in half. It's got to punch the end. So this is just gonna tuck in right there. And then on this side, I cut a mat out of the stripe. So it's two and a quarter by three. Again, scallop punch the corners. We're going to just glue that right down on the page. And then I cut, uh, put a sticker. This is a little cutting board, it's Home Sweet Home sticker. I put it on black cardstock, and I'm just going to create a, a tuck spot here. So I'm only going to put glue on the very bottom. 
because I want a picture to be able to tuck in behind that. So we'll just stick that right there. And that turned out really cute. It's really simple, but still cute that way. Um, if you have any kind of scraps that you might want to put across here, that would be fine. I'm going to go ahead and flip to the next page. So we have this double here. Um, we have this little flip. So it originally opened up, measured four and a half by three, folded in half, punch the corners, and I'm just going to put glue on the back side. And this is just going to glue in right here on this page. And then I have a mat here, photo mat, two and a half, two and five eighths by three. Scallop punch the corners. And we're going to mat this down. Then I have another little booklet. These are two cut aparts that I left together. So they were together, they were like four, three and three quarters by two, folded them right in half and then punched the corners. So this kind of goes here, but I'm going to just attach it on the hinge side and just across the bottom. So it's going to cover up this one here, but I still like the way it turns out, it flips up, and then you can tuck the picture behind it. So just make sure these stick down really good. Okay, next page. Now you might want to add paper clip or something to this if you left room underneath for one. And just flip it to the next set of pages. I have made a flip out. So this was a three by four cut apart. I made a hinge, a one inch wide piece of scrap paper that was the four inch height. Scored this at a half, which made it half inch on each side. Attached it to the cut apart on the right side on the back. Then you open up your hinge, you put your glue here, and then we're going to lift up. We're going to attach it on the cut edge of this page. And this is going to make a fold out flap doesn't fit exactly the whole length, but it's pretty close, so I'm just going to kind of center it and press it down. So when you open it up, you have the finished hinge in here, and you can put photos like that, and you can burnish this down more. And then I cut a smaller photo mat, which is two and an eighth by two and a half. Again, scalp punch the corners. Glue, bring this here, center it with the berries. So we got fresh picked strawberries, so this flips open and you can add photos. And we'll bring this back. So here on this side, I decided to make a belly band. I took the farmhouse sticker, matted it to the black cardstock. So with the sticker, it is about three inches by one. And the glue is just going to go on each short end for a flat belly band. And I'm putting it on the page right over the other farmhouse. Now, it depends on how yours turned out, which is just above, above the ribbon. We'll make sure we're not hindering the ribbon. We'll just make sure it clears. The ribbon here and then I took another double here and um, then that's three and three quarters about four inches by the two inch fold it in half and punch the corners and I'm just going to tuck that in like that and then on this side we have the cutting board wood look mat and I forgot to measure that for you but Whatever your scraps are, 
three inch or two and a half. Scalp punch the corners. Let me just test this down in here. And I wanted to use um, my last flower. So I've taken this apart. This is the base. Put glue with the leaf. So I disassembled it as I did before and uh, to make it flatter. So I'm just gluing it here at the base of this photo mat. And then add some more glue for the center petals. And a little bit of the yellow where I cut the plastic off. Center look just like that, and then I was thinking about adding some ribbon in. I don't know, let's see here, yeah, that looks kind of cool. So, this is a tiny little piece of ribbon scrap, it's about two and a half inches long, and I'm going to kind of put glue on the inside and glue it together. It's too short to tie, so I've just got this glued the bottom into like a little loop and then I put glue on the back side and I'm just going to tuck it in behind the flower a little bit right here and kind of push it up so that it kind of fluffs up and then I think I'll put another one same length glue them together on the bottom to make a loop And then we add glue on one side. And I'm just going to lift this up and kind of tuck it in. Right in there like that. And then I have some of these um, greenery stickers. I want to use every sticker I had. So these are the last ones. And I put them on black cardstock and fussy cut around them. So I'm thinking I'm just going to incorporate that into there. Put some glue on the back. And stick it in. That bow or the ribbon, whoops. Pull my center off. There we go. And we got this one. And we have one more that I may put in there. And I'm not going to glue the top so that a picture can go behind it. And they're like that. So okay. we're going to let that dry. This page is done. And here I forgot to add on these little pockets here. I fussy cut out a barn for each side and a rooster and a hen. So. I'm going to go ahead and glue these down. This is just for decorating. So I'm just going to put glue over the entire barn. I'm going to stick it right here in the center. Then I'm going to take the hen that I fussy cut out. This is just out of the paper scraps. And then I'm going to put her kind of like right there in front. Just that on. And this bigger barn. And then we have the rooster. Put that right there. That's cute. Had some more barn, barns left over, but I don't think I'm going to be using them. Then on the back, I'm going to flip it to the back, and I cut out from the branding strip where it says Farmhouse Kitchen. Sometimes I like to do this so I can remember the, uh, the name of the paper collection I use. So this is totally optional. You don't have to do that. But sometimes when I'm designing, I kind of like to know. Kind of like a credit thing here on the back. 
And then I also cut out Echo Park Paper Company. And I'm going to put that right above it. Okay, just like that. Glue. Okay, so then I still have this little tag here that I made that has a really cute button that it was in my stash, bits of the ribbon. And it's too thick to go on the inside. So I'm thinking I'm just going to tie it on. To finish off my little tiny book here that I made out of leftover scraps of papers, I did tie this made with love tags that you can write to it's who you're giving it to, if you're giving it as a gift, and who it's from. Or you could just snip this off. It's just tied in with this yellow ribbon here, so it's just right in here. You could just snip that off if you didn't want that on there. So this makes a really cute little decoration. It stands up like this. It's real chunky, so if you were standing it up on a shelf, it would be decorative like that. Got the little frame here in the front and the flower. Lots of ribbon here in the spine. The two charm pieces that I made on the button twine with beads and the bee charm and a ladybug and so you just open it up we have photo mats and we have little fold outs here held by the paper clip little tags tags under a belly band photo frame mats another booklet here it's just a lot of fun to use all, all the different little elements of paper that you might have and left over from a bigger project so just use up as many scraps as you can, photo mats in a frame. Use the dually here. I've got a tag in this pocket. Belly band, uh, actually it's a pocket here with its tuck ins. Flip out, tuck spot here for this. This comes completely out. Photo mat, two inserts in these pockets. Belly band here, another frame, photo mat, pocket with a, another fold out booklet like this out of the scraps, photo mat, photo mat flip booklet here and here, and then it's left open underneath so a photo can tuck in for this mat. Photo mat, flip out where you can add photos there. And another little booklet here under this belly band so it just opens like that. It's just a cute fun way to play with paper that you have left over. This is a mat, photo mat here and you can slide a photo back underneath the flower and then the back. So that's my little tiny book made out of scraps. Um, I always like to try to get three projects out of a collection that I am sent in my design team package from Country Craft Creations. So for this one, I did have enough left over to create three, what I'm calling recipe gift cards. Let me move this out of the way. I'm not going to do a tutorial video on these. I just want to share them. Um, these are made out of real heavy cardstock that I made uh, cut to um, six inches wide by eight inches tall, and then scored them in half to get the four by six. And then I just decorated it with different layers of the paper, a layer on the background, some foam dots underneath here. These are cutter parts, some flowers from my stash, some of the seam binding ribbon. And then I have these recipe cards in my stash, so I just put a recipe card inside. So these would be a really fun gift to give at a shower, a wedding bridal shower. This is the same way. It's uh, lifted up here. Got the flower here and the button twine. This one, I didn't do the mat foam dots so i left it flat it's different layers of scraps of paper that just kind of pulls the whole thing together and all three of them have
and all three of them have the recipe card here on the center. So these would be fun too as place cards, I would think, at a shower. So you could make them like that so that you could stand them up. So these are a lot of fun. There is no tutorial on these because it's just really simple, just using your scraps and um, fold cardstock card bases that are four by six and then add your recipe card on the center. It would be fun to add a recipe to give to someone. So that's really fun. So this is my uh, second and third project using the Echo Park Farmhouse Kitchen paper collection that I received from Country Craft Creations for my design team package. And I want to thank you all for watching. I hope that you will subscribe if you haven't already to my channel. Be sure to click on that bell so that you'll know Get a notification the next time I upload a video and also check out countrycraftcreations.com uh, online store for your scrapbooking supplies. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.